Thank you so much for inviting me today. So I wanted to talk about some of the mental health challenges with navigating our new reality. If I could have the next slide, please. So when we think about COVID-19, it really has brought, brought many, many mental health challenges. It's brought um, for lots of people, uh, depression, sadness, loss, um, sadly, people have, have lost family members either through COVID or through other illnesses, but their ability to, to really mourn in the way we, we typically do in our various cultural groups has been really changed because of the need for physical distancing and then the challenges around gathering together. I think if you haven't had anxiety during COVID, there's something wrong with you. Um, but for some people, it really has become a higher, um, more... Uh, concerning um, uh, level. In terms of uh, hopelessness, I think the frustration and just the day-to-day -day and on and on um, quality of this has been really challenging. And for people who live in areas sort of like uh, we do in the GTN are finally looking at opening up, that's going to be helpful. Certainly dealing with uncertainty has been a huge challenge for folks. And you know, I often think about some of my colleagues who um, kind of feel like they are, you know, the kind of em empresses uh, of their destiny and they can control everything and you could go down to um, Starbucks and get a 142 degree one and a half pump, you know, skim milk with no foam latte. And that feeling that uh, particularly for those of us who are more, um, uh, you know, live in Canada, have some economic advantage that we really can control everything. And this has been a huge reminder that we can't. There are folks who have had acute uh, stress responses and post-traumatic uh, stress responses. And also, um, I think very common that there have been relationship stresses uh, related to either confinement and people having to share space or to not being able to see people that, um, that we love and are connected with as often as we want. And then there are a whole series of stresses related to parenting and co-parenting and grandparenting during COVID. So um, much of what's been written in the popular media suggests that everybody is falling apart mentally. What's been very interesting in some of the research to date is that there certainly are a significant number of people, and depending on the study you look at, that number is different, but somewhere between maybe 20 and 40 percent who are having you know, significant problems at this time. And, and for those folks, I think it really is important to reach out to your family physician as a first step and, um, and get some support and uh, try to look at what might be helpful. I think the good news on the other hand is that uh, the majority of people have really managed to kind of weather their way through this. And although you know, I think most people are, are really tired out. So what I wanted to spend most of my time talking about was um, how we can build our resilience. So if we could move to the next slide, please. Um, you know, when I first started in psychiatry, the thought basically was that you kind of got your aliquot of res resilience. And, you know, that might have been related to your childhood experiences, your upbringing, your genetics, but you had whatever you had, and that was what you had, and there wasn't much to do about it. Really over the last 10 years, there's a huge amount of research that shows that we can build our capacity for resilience. Um, in some ways, just having gotten through this episode of COVID is going to confer more resilience because it's been hard, uh, but we've gotten through. But there are also choices that we can make in daily life that really help. And um, to help remember them, people talk about the five C's of resilience. So control, connection, commitment, caring, and calming, and I'll say something about each of those. So if we go to the next slide around control, I think it's really helpful for all of us to work on kind of what is out of my control and what is in my control and things that are outside of our control to try to just come to terms with them. And um, I'm always telling people don't add fuel to the fire. And with my Starbucks story, I was, you know, uh, alluding to how much control lots of us feel we have and COVID has really shown us we don't <laughs> about big things right but I, I can't find the vaccine um, I can't make it go away I can't suddenly go to it to the holiday that I wanted to do so some things are out of my control and it's probably better to not spend a lot of time uh, focusing on those or worrying about those 
What is really helpful though to spend time on is what is in my control. What are the choices that I could make? And even small um, little choices every day that might uh, confer some greater ease in my daily life. So I think really important around managing news and social media. Uh, for some people, the news and social media are helpful. For a lot of people, I think they're very, uh, very disruptive and distressing and disturbing. Um, I always say to people, I think choosing kindness, that all of us are stressed and that if we can be a little bit kinder to people, that has benefit in making us feel better and in building our resilience. And it's also a better thing for the world. I think we can choose things that help us to feel better. And I'll say a little bit more about that um, in a couple of minutes. And I think there's a lot of evidence that shows that acts of altruism, of these, you know, doing tangible things for the people that are in our in our circle or in a broader sense in philanthropy can be really helpful for people in gaining a sense of control and fostering greater resilience in the face of these challenges. If you turn to the next uh, slide for us, that's really around connections and connections are an absolutely essential part of being human. For some of us, or for most of us probably, connections are with other human beings. For some of us, the most important connections in our lives are with animals, or with ideas, or politics, or art, or beauty, or music. But really knowing what it is that my connections are, what's important to me, and how can I actualize them, realize them, be in touch with them in the face of the restrictions of COVID. One of the things that's been really um, hard, and I, I notice that every day in my life, is how much COVID-19 has fostered uh, kind of an us and them mentality. So, you know, I am I know that I'm not sick, but I'm sure you are. And you know that you're not sick, but you're sure I am. And everybody feeling that they have to pull apart from each other. And I think that that's very challenging. One of the things usually when people talk about the, uh, you know, what's the response to stress, there's a lot of um, talk given to fight and flight. But there's more recently people have um, described a response called tend and befriend that under um, periods of very high stress, instead of fight or flight, we could choose to tend and befriend. We could take care of ourselves, we could tend to those we love, we could be kind to people. And that in doing those things, we really, really help uh, our own inner stress physiology to settle down and to, to be much better. Uh, we have to remember that it's physical distancing, not social distancing that we're being called to do. And, um, that uh, we can find ways of being connected socially. And I think really, um, again, if people have the means to do so, using technology to foster connections is really helpful. Um, but, you know, over the internet, amazing things. I know people who have cocktail parties, dinner parties, dance parties, watch movies together, play games together. Um, people who phone people. Um, there's the concept of COVID buddies. Um, so picking somebody uh, who you promise that you're going to check in on uh, at some predetermined uh, frequency so that and that you can be real with about how you're doing or not. Uh, I think lots of people have in this kind of tend and befriend mode have chosen to take on uh, several people who live alone or people who aren't as well socially connected and to connect with them. And that is something that can be very helpful in managing our own stress. Uh, and also sometimes looking at past friends that we've lost uh, track of just because of the busyness of daily life. And now that we have a little bit more time connecting with them can be helpful. If we turn to the next slide, uh, the sea of commitment. And so the dictionary uh, describes commitment as the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause, activity, etc. So I ask myself, I encourage other people to ask themselves, you know, what are you committed to? And how can you live out those commitments during COVID? So maybe there are things that you can't do that you would otherwise do, but maybe there are ways that you can uh, live out those commitments. And, you know, when we come, everybody's hoping when we come out of COVID, but, you know, might there be lessons from what we've gone through that may influence how we decide to use our time and our resources moving forward? And are there potentially new commitments that we might want to make or current commitments that we might want to um, modify based on COVID? So I think focusing on how to actualize those commitments in the face of our challenges is very helpful. 
And then if we can turn to the next slide, we have got C, which is caring. And in some ways that's run through a lot of what I've talked about. I think caring for ourselves, caring for others, and really recognizing that self-care is the foundation for both our mental and our physical health. And this is a really an ideal time for us to tune up self-care, to look at you know, what we might uh, tweak. So um, you know, I decided in my own life, I'm somebody who tends to burn the candle at both ends, but that um, sleep is one of the most important and powerful things that you can do for yourself and to help um, have good um, uh, immune function. So I've really been working on my number one priority in COVID has been to get my sleep every night. Uh, for some people it's exercise, uh, optimizing nutrition. People have often talked about the COVID-19, meaning COVID-19 pounds from uh, eating junk food, but trying to eat healthier. And particularly if you've got a little bit more time and you can, um, can make, uh, make more of your food. If we go to the next slide, um, it also shows, you know, I think finding small pleasures in daily life is really important. There's lots of research that says that uh, you have more troubles with stress if you've got very big stressors in your life or then the next generation was little stressors. And, more recently, I think people have seen that as long as you have small little doses of pleasure, and they can be really small, enjoying the scent of a, a tea or a coffee or the smell of a, a soap or shampoo in the shower or the feeling of the water on your body in the shower. If you can find those small pleasures in daily life, that's extraordinarily helpful. I think for many people, laughing every day is important. I have developed one of the world's best collections of COVID-19 memes. Um, that is very helpful for me. I think cultivating optimism very early in the um, pandemic, one of my patients said to me, uh, she just thinks at the end of every day, we're one day closer to the vaccine. And so I've taken that on too. And I think there's great wisdom there and being kind. And then if we go to our last C in the next slide, and that is calming. And there are lots of different approaches to use for calming oneself. And it's really about finding one or ones that work for you because everybody's a little bit different in this way. But you know, the feelings that we've talked about are very normative. People need to be able to, um, to talk about them, to express them. It's fine to ask for help. You know, I think if you look at your whole sort of uh, social network, as long as one person's standing, they can support the rest of the group. It may be a bad day for everybody else. Really helpful for us to burn off excess uh, anxious energy and that's, tied up with exercise, whole lots of different things you can use around breath for calming, um, and then calming skills and, uh, and calming down. And I'm not sure if we go to the next slide, if the resources show or whether we're going to slow those. Yeah, so Family Doc is incredibly helpful. Uh, there is a COVID-19 special uh, content on a wide variety of platforms. I really like the 10% Happier one. Common Headspace meditation applications have free content. And then last slide um, has uh, some other Google or YouTube. If you just put any of those terms into your Google uh, engine or your YouTube, you're going to find hundreds of examples that you can uh, listen along with. And for mindfulness meditation, um, uh, mark.ucla.edu is helpful. So hopefully those will help you in, uh, in moving forward into this next phase of COVID. Thank you.